In this video, you're gonna learn how to configure DHCP on the Palo Alto file. Let's go! Hi! If we haven't met before, my name is Ricardo. I'm the founder of NetSums, where we help security professionals level up their skills. So in this video, we're gonna configure DHCP on the Palo Alto file. And in our test scenario, we have here the file. Yeah, I can see I can draw very well. And connected to the file is a Windows server. And at the file, we have the Ethernet 1 slash 2. And this Windows server is gonna boot and it's gonna try to get an IP address and the file is gonna provide this Windows with one. Let's see what the configuration looks like at the file. So I'm at the file now. If you take a look in network interfaces, the Windows server is connected to this Ethernet 1.2, as I mentioned before, and it's gonna boot up and send a broadcast, as usual with the HCP, asking for an IP address. And the file is gonna provide the Windows with an IP address from this network 10.0.1.0 slash 24. The configuration is done under network, and here's a menu called DHCP. That's where we configure it. I already have the configuration, but I'm gonna show you what I did. If you don't have this interface done, you have to come to add, and it's more or less the same thing as what I did. I clicked on add, and then added here the interface Ethernet 1.2. The mode, you can set either to enable, or you can set to auto, as in this second one. I cannot change it here, by the way, because I configured my firewood using Panorama, and Panorama is the management appliance from, from Palo Alto that you can configure several files at the same time. IP pool, you can enter IP pool, it means that the file is gonna start providing the IP address 11 all the way to 99, and after that, the file won't be able to provide any IP addresses anymore if the network is full, let's say like this. In this case, the leases I set to unlimited, only because I'm in the test lab. Otherwise, I would configure a lease to, if I'm on production, to a timeout, maybe of one day or two days, because if somebody changes the laptop, for example, one day later, this IP address will be, let's say, recycled. If you don't want to enter one day, it's fine. You can enter maybe on um, one week, but I would be careful with this unlimited. Here's an option also, ping IP when allocating new IPs. I would recommend it to have this option selected. One thing that would go against activating this option is that when the file sends a ping, it, wa it waits for the answer from the ping, it means that maybe there's a delay of one or two seconds until the file can release or can give an IP address. The DHCP process, when you have this option here activated, it's a little bit slower, but I ask myself if really the user notices something when the, the PC is booting. Anyway, because of the DHCP process starts in the very beginning of the booting process, so in the end, I think the user doesn't really notice anything. That's why I have this option on, because if somebody comes and sets a, a static IP address for a server or for a client, in this network, maybe if the file doesn't know that, or if it's not verifying if this IP address is being used or not, can be that the file gives an IP address that's already in use and then you have duplicated IP address in the network. That's why this option is set in my lab. If you have a more secure environment, if you only have servers, for example, or if you have some restrictions on the switch that the switch only allows DHCP clients to come into the network, you could deactivate this option. But in most cases, I like to leave it on. Here on the right side, you have reserved IP addresses. You can reserve IPs if you have the MAC addresses of the clients, so that whenever this client comes with this MAC address, only gets this IP address. It's kind of like a, having a static IP address, but with a DHCP running in the background, let's say like this. The client always gets this IP address if it's in this network. If a client moves to another network, then it's not gonna be getting this IP address, of course. But that's the difference between the DHCP with a reservation and a static IP, because with a static IP, if the client gets connected to another network, it won't have any connectivity. At least when you have DHCP activated on the client, the client's lease is able to communicate with the network. And here I have a second one also with the MAC address. Under options, you have the option to set a gateway, which is your default gateway. In most cases, you would be setting a default gateway. In my case, here is the IP address from the firewall itself. Probably in your case, will be the same. The subnet mask and one DNS server that the client is going to be using after it connects. I also enter here a DNS suffix of my test network. If you have some more secondary DNS name, Win server, NTP server, if your client uses it, uses this information from DHCP. And you can also have some custom DHCP options. But the most used ones are 
really these three, gateway, subnet mask, and primary DNS. If you want also the DNS to fix the rest, I really don't use that often. Okay. So I'm going to boot my client now and take a look. My configuration is already committed. If I click here on view allocation, I had my client connect before. Well, this is a client with the reserved MAC address. So it's going to get this IP address, 111. This is my Windows 11. And whenever you have a new client here, you can click on the view allocation and you're going to see new IP addresses. And here's the configuration. DNS to fix, RICnets, gateway, DNS. Let's take a look at the client now. So in my case, this is a virtual client and I need to boot it up. So my virtual client is there. Let's take a look. It's already connected. And I can go to CMD. And I can enter IP config. And then I can see I got the IP address 10.0.1.11. If I enter slash all, you'll see that MAC address is the one that finishes with 90 D1. So let's go back to the file. So I'm back at the file. You can see on the right side the MAC address 90 D1. This belongs to my Windows client. And this Windows client got the IP address 10.0.1.11. One thing that I forgot to show you is you need also a DHCP rule to allow this connection. I have here my rule, it's called allow DHCP. I click on the rule, you can take a look. I'm allowing actually any, source any, since I'm on my lab. Of course, if you're in on production, I would recommend you to restrict the source zones, not to leave at any. And as a destination, in my case, I have my DHCP servers. In this case here, I have the destination zone correctly set. And in this case here, I'm allowing the application DHCP. Here I have application default and here action. I have a recommendation for you. As a destination, instead of using directly the IP addresses or objects here, I would use an object group, an address group in this case, which I would call DHCP servers, for example, where I have all my DHCP servers inside. So whenever there is a new network that needs the DHCP. So I only need to, to come here to objects. I need to create the address, would be the object, the IP address from the file, for example. And as an address group, I would enter here this new object to the group. So as a summary, instead of working with these IP addresses here, you can see here on the right side, just like this, I would use here an address group because it can get very long if you have many networks. One more thing about the DHCP. Let's go to network. Under DHCP, you have DHCP server. It means that the file is the DHCP server from this network. But it can be that you have a separate DHCP server, but the file needs to forward this broadcast that the client's sending in their networks. For example, in this case, I have a client that's in my network 10.0.1.0 slash 24, but can be that the DHCP server is located somewhere else in another network. And if you don't forward this, broadcast, the client won't get any IP address. The DHCP server won't get any information. So in this case, you can come here and set a DHCP relay instead. So in this case, you say, okay, which interface are you talking about? In this case, it would be my 1.2. And I can set the DHCP server IP address from my network would be 192.168.4.1.1. For example. You can press OK. OK, I already have Ethernet 1.2 uh, set for DHCP server. I can use another one. Huh? I can use, for example, the 4. There. The 4 is not being used as a DHCP server, so it was OK. So every time a broadcast asking for DHCP comes through the interface 1 slash 4, the file is going to forward this broadcast as a unicast to the server located on the IP address 192.168.4.10. Okay, so the server answers to the file and the file forwards this answer from the server to this client that was asking for an IP address. That's how it works. This is also another way to configure DHCP. It's like an IP helper. Maybe some of you know from switches or from Cisco switches that the Palo Alto world is called DHCP relay. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up, it helps us a lot. And maybe this other video here can help you further with the Palo Alto configuration and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.